Hey guys, exciting things are happening. We are graphing linear inequalities, okay? And you should just be like, it's your favorite sandwich or something. You're so excited, okay? So when I'm graphing these, the good news is if you have been graphing lines, this is not very different. It's gonna be not too bad. There's just three things we need to remember as we are graphing these that are different than when we just graph a line, okay? So the three things are, I'm telling you, okay? Is a solid versus a dotted line, shading, and we flip the sign if we multiply or divide by a negative, okay? Stick with me if you're like, I don't know what she's talking about, okay? First of all, my first goal when doing this is to get y by itself because that's usually the easiest way to graph a line. And guess what? Y is already by itself in this case. So since I didn't have to change this inequality at all, I don't even have to worry about this bottom one of flipping the sign because I'm not going to multiply or divide by a negative, right? If you want to see an example where I do that, I will link one for you in the corner, okay? But we don't have to do that here. So we just need to worry about the solid versus dotted line and the shading, which we will do in just a minute. When I first graph this, I'm just going to pretend like this is an equal sign for a second, okay? So we are in slope intercept form with y being alone, which means this is my slope, right? And my y intercept is whatever is being added or subtracted on the back. Now there's nothing here, right? But this could be plus zero, right? So when there's nothing there, it could be a plus zero. So that zero is my y intercept. Okay. If you need a review on graphing lines, I'll link one for you in the corner. Okay. But my y intercept is at zero, which means here's my y axis, right? My line crosses at zero. Okay. Now the slope is what tells me what that line looks like, right? My slope is negative three fourths. I can stick that negative with the top or the bottom and I'm actually gonna do both, right? So first I'm gonna do the slope as negative three over four, okay? And we like to think of it as rise over run, right? Which really just means up and down over left and right, okay? So I start at my y-intercept and then I'm going to go down three, right four, one, two, three, four. And I can do it again. And then I can also think of it as three over negative four, right? Which means I go up three, left four, okay? Up three, left four. Was that four? One, two, three, four. Okay. <laughs> All right, so there is my line. But I'm not going to draw it quite yet because remember, I need to check and see if this is going to be a solid or a dotted line. Okay. So, oh, let me grab my paper. It's coming. Okay. If I have less than or greater than, it is going to be a dotted line. Because with an inequality, when you have less than or greater than, that line is acting as a boundary, but I don't actually have any answers along that line. Okay, when we have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it is a solid line because answers lie along the line. Okay, so since this is y is greater than, it is going to be a dotted line. Okay, so it's going to look something, oh gosh, guys, something, apparently I need to practice drawing dotted lines, something like that, right? Okay. There is my dotted line. Now, the last thing that I need to do is shading. Because this is an inequality, I have a lot of possible answers, okay? It is either all the ordered pairs on this side of the line or all the ordered pairs on that side of the line, okay? So to figure out which one it is, what I'm going to do is pick a point on one of these sides, okay? and plug it in and see if the answer comes out true, okay? Now, normally we like to make it as easy on ourselves as possible, right? So I usually pick zero, zero to plug in, but the kind of bad news about this problem is zero, zero actually lies along my line, so I can't plug it in, right? If I plug that in, I won't know which side to shade, right? Because it's along the line. So I can't pick that one, which is normally the one I like to pick, right? But I can pick something that is almost as easy, okay? So I'm going to pick zero, one, that point right there. And we're going to plug zero, one in, 
Okay. I could literally plug any point in that isn't along this line, but I want to be nice to myself. Okay. So when I have zero, one, the first number is my X. Second number is my Y. And I'm going to plug it into this equation. See if it comes out true. Okay. So I've got Y, which is one. Y is greater than negative three fourths times X, which is zero. Okay, so I've got one is greater than negative three fourths times zero is just zero, right? So this is when I look at it and go, okay, is one greater than zero? Yes, it is, right? That is true. So the point I plugged in was here. It was above the line and it was true. So that means any of the points on this side are going to be true. So I signify that by sort of coloring it in over there. Okay. With my beautiful coloring skills. Now, I hope you can imagine that this line goes on forever, right? That's why I put the arrows on it. And really this shading goes on forever on that side of the line. It's kind of hard to show that, right? But it goes on forever on that side of the line. You could pick any point over here and it will work for this inequality. Okay. All right. I hope this made sense. If you need to look at any other examples, I will link a playlist for you. If this video helped, if you could hit the like button, that helps me a lot. Um, but I hope this made sense. Thanks. Bye.